Good morning, and welcome to St. Joseph Church on this, the 31st Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today's scripture readings can be found in our hymn book, number 1183, 1183, and our presider is Father Jim. As we prepare for worship, we remind you to silence your cell phones and we invite you to turn towards those around you and welcome them. Some announcements. Tomorrow is All Saints Day, and we will have Masses here in the church at 8, 11, and 7 p.m. On Tuesday, it's All Souls Day, and you are invited to the Music Maker's performance of John Rutter's Wet Requiem at seven o'clock Tuesday night. The program is dedicated to those who died in the past year, including the victims of COVID-19. It's open to the public, no ticket is needed, and a free will offering will be taken. Also on Tuesday, the women of the parish are invited to attend the Walking with Purpose Coffee, Tuesday again, one o'clock in the parish center. For those who can't make the one o'clock on Tuesday, there is a Zoom option Tuesday night at eight. The Knights of Columbus are hosting a military and patriotic ball. It's coming up this coming Saturday. Tickets are available in the parish business office. Also on Saturday is the Women of St. Joseph's Craft Fair. Information on this event and all of what I've mentioned so far can be found in today's bulletin. Please join in singing number 703, Lord of all nations, grant me grace, number 703. Please stand.
Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Wonderful time to see everyone here in the church on the crisp Sunday morning. The high today is only going to be 75. Yes. So we'd like to welcome all the northerners down here who are shaking their heads saying, why are you people complaining? <laughs> We're happy to be here today as in today's gospel from Mark, Jesus says there are two great commandments, to love God and to love our neighbor as ourselves. But how do we do that? How do we do that out of the everyday experience of lives and in our everyday experience? How do we understand the gift of love that we have in our hearts? So let's take a moment to ask the Lord to be with us and to ask him for his mercy. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, Fear the Lord your God, and keep throughout the days of your lives all his statutes and commandments, which I enjoin on you, and thus have a long life. Hear then, Israel, and be careful to observe them, that you may grow and prosper the more in keeping with the promise of the Lord, the God of your fathers, to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O, hear, o Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Therefore, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Take to heart these words, which I enjoin on you today. The word of the Lord. Jesus, because he remained forever, has a priesthood that does not go away. Therefore, he is always able to save those who approach God through him, since he lived forever to make intercessions for them. It was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, higher than the heavens. He has no need, as did the high priests, to offer sacrifice day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of his people. 
He did it once and for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints men subject to weakness to be high priests. But the word of the oath, which was taken after the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. sisters, may the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, which is the first of all commandments? Jesus replied, the first is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, well said teacher, you are right in saying he is one and there is no other than he. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Before we start the homily, I just want to on a side note, talk about this upcoming week. You know, even though tomorrow, All Saints Day, is not a holy day of obligation in this country this year because it falls on a Monday, we still celebrate it nonetheless. And let me just kind of regroup here a little bit. I may have told you this before, but on All Saints Day, if it does fall on a Saturday and Monday, it's not going to be a holy day of obligation because in many dioceses, especially in the western part of the country where there are few churches and few priests, it's very difficult to get around when they're riding on a circuit to visit all their churches at one time and then the next day. And this also makes, creates a burden on the parishioners as well. But it doesn't stop us from going to church ourselves. So. We are really looking forward to, to having you with us this day. But what's so important about All Saints Day and All Souls Day? For me, it's a time when, especially the older I get, it's a time to really recognize those who have gone before us in the light of faith. It gives us a moment to simply stop and let our souls catch up with, with life 
It gives us a chance to reflect upon the goodness that they, they demonstrated in their lives and how they shared that goodness with others. It's a reflection of today's gospel when we are commanded to love God and to love one another. But most of all, it's a reflection of God's spirit in this world. You know, we get so wound up with politics, with the economy, with people, you know, getting in our faces at the stores or, you know, things aren't the way they used to be back in the 1920s. I can't say 1920s, that was my dad talking. 1970s, but they're not the same. And God continues to send his spirit to make these changes. So let's take a look at these very beautiful days, All Saints Day and All Souls Day, and come to a realization that we are coming to God to say thank you and nothing else and to resting in the spirit and let him come into our hearts. Today's gospel from Mark, Jesus is being asked about the greatest commandment. What is the first and greatest commandment that we have? And it's important to recognize that Jesus could have given him a whole litany of things of what to do and not to do and how to break them down and just really, really confuse the scribes and the Pharisees. But he knew the authenticity in the heart of this scribe. He knew that this scribe was not asking him a question to trip him up, but rather he was being asked the question for some true spiritual understanding. If we are to follow God in his commandments, which one should we place the biggest priority? And Jesus started out with, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. But how? How do we do that? We wake up in the morning, perhaps say our morning prayers, have our breakfast, you know, turn on the TV and just kind of, you know, do whatever we do on a normal basis. And then what? Well, then the distractions start coming into our lives. And a lot of times we can forget what we are doing in terms of working in the light of the Lord. And we start to become very consumed with the distractions. People will, a distraction in this case, well, maybe someone brings up something to us that we don't like. Maybe it is about politics or the economy. And we start to give our two cents worth in, and we start to get wound up and all charged up and get ourselves out of sort. An argument ensues, and then we have to call the person up a, late, a week later and say, hey, give your, oh, by the way, here's a little parentheses advertisement. When you get into a real fuss, when you get into a real argument, a real tussle with somebody, give yourself, and they say, you know, don't go to bed angry and don't let the sun set. Yeah, do all those good things. However, comma, give yourselves five days to calm down. A lot of people get so worked up over something. Somebody says something to them, ready, ready to go, boy. And give yourselves five days. And when you do that, you start to see things in a normal perspective. And you can approach the situation in your home a lot better. Okay. Back to the distractions. We get going and we forget what happened at the beginning of the day, giving ourselves to Jesus himself. A lot of times we will come to church in the morning. Sunday morning, we're all ready to go. And we go out to the restaurant and we start complaining because the eggs are over medium instead of over easy. And we make the waiters and waitresses they're back. Don't ever make the waiters and waitresses mad because they prepare your food back there, okay? Trust me, I know. <laughs> but then we get all wound up. Jesus is saying basically, let's start over. And start the day in a spiritual way, even if it's just when we wake up in the morning, wake up in the morning. Don't be waking up like an old bear. You know, some people get up and, ah, you got to get up in the morning and, 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 and i got to make my coffee and I have to... Get up in the morning, kick the covers off, and say, yowza, I'm ready to start this day. Try it. 
And then you get up in the morning and you fix your coffee and you do whatever you like to do. You know what I'm into now? Zucchini pancakes. One zucchini, one egg, one tablespoon of flour and a little salt. Oh, it is so good. And anyhow, let's, let's get some of this there. Get all worked up. But when we give the Lord the day, he gives us a peace and enthusiasm about us to keep going. When we don't fully, authentically give the Lord the day, it becomes a burden. And life was not ever intended to be a burden. When we give the Lord the day, we always carve out time to talk to him. And for some, it's a quiet time of five minutes or even an hour. The bishop in Denver, when I was years ago, he says, that he prayed six hours a day, six hours a day. He got up at three o'clock in the morning. That's early, okay? And he says, I don't expect my priest to do that, of course. But I, he says, I do expect, expect my priests to be prayerful people. And when we come together as a parish, we are expected to be prayerful people even when we leave the church on Sunday. For some, it's five or 10 minutes of meditation. For some, it's an hour. For some, it's not meditation at all. It's saying a ritualized prayer. All these things are good. For some, they don't do ritualized prayers at all. They talk to Jesus personally, one-to-one, -one, since he is sitting in front of them. There's no as if here. He is sitting in front of them, and we talk to the Lord knowing that he understands our conversations, our prayers, and our requests. And then we go through the day knowing that we have a friend with us at all times, and he's never going to leave us alone. That sets the stage for our whole lives. Then Jesus says there's another commandment, love, the neighbor, love your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> this is a real challenge in life. And you know what, folks? I'm going to admit something. I'm going to confess something to you. Now, did you ever hear a priest confession? <laughs> well, 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 you're about to. Sometimes I have problems with neighbors. And I don't mean next door neighbors at home. I mean in humanity, in relationships. And sometimes somebody, oh, you know, I'm not the best morning person in the world. And I don't really like evenings as well, but... I do lunch real well, let me tell you. <laughs> but someone will get me at 8 o'clock at eight in the morning, and I'm like, Rrr. and I have to bite my tongue, and I have to realize that I'm not a dog, and I have to realize that I have to pull myself back from the situation and look at this, and look at another person's perspective, and look at the fact that at that particular time of day, I may not be that patient, and I have to really, really respond accordingly but there's other times that loving your neighbor is difficult as well it's when people directly hurt you and they will be hurting you there are people who really protect themselves so much build up walls around themselves they will not let anyone cross that path of privacy and they will bark at people no matter what you can have them over for dinner on a Tuesday, and by Thursday, they're talking about you. That's tough, okay? This person doesn't have a dishwasher, and you can tell by the condition of the dishes and the silverware. It's just... Yeah, they're out there, folks, and their name is Legion, right? But we have to do something about that. And the way we do things about it, if they are posing a danger, it needs to be addressed. If they are posing a real sense of destruction for someone in our family or, or even another person that is helpless, we need to stop that. But they're, they're just being odd. We need to just walk away. And do you know how difficult it is to walk away? Because sometimes when we stand for justice and peace and everything that is good, we want to fix the other person. We want to tell them they're wrong. We want to tell them what's right. We want to tell them everything. And see, my hand is going like that. It's going like that. 
When did we ever demonstrate in an argument the love of Jesus in our relationships? That's tough, folks. That's tough to stop, let alone pull back. That's tough to just stop that anger and realize that they're children of God and worthy of his blessings as well. If we want to really stop the anger and building up of walls and everything else in our relationships with people, we've got to quit sending armament into their camps and instead try to understand where they are. And if you want to make a convert to the Lord to expand the kingdom of God, this is tough. We have to just simply be patient and be with them. And how do you do that when people are mocking you and talking about you? You send them a Christmas card. You send them a, a, a whatever card, Valentine's Day card, Thanksgiving card, thinking if you had a great time the other day, hope to see you soon. And people are going to look at you like you're the strangest thing that ever walked the face of the earth. And that's good because you know you're doing your job. You're acting different than the world. Well, I got a project for you between now and Thanksgiving. You got to start getting your list ready for the holidays, who you're going to spend it with. And don't tell me, oh, we always celebrate alone. We're not real joiners and we're not real social people. Oh, stop that. So I want you to think about something for a minute. I want you to think about the most obnoxious people you know in this world. And don't look up here at once. <laughs> it might offend the deacon's feelings, okay? I told him to take his mask off this morning, and I don't mean the little blue thing. He says, Father, I don't know what you mean, take your mask off. I go, we're not celebrating Halloween till at least 6 p.m. tonight, so. But he left his mask on, so I'm real proud of him. Anyhow, he, you have to think about that one. But what I want you to do is think of those obnoxious people. Maybe just send them a little card. And I really feel for those people in this congregation today that get a lot of cards. All right? <laughs> but you know what? Just send a card to say, how you doing? I hope you enjoy this upcoming season. It's going to be a great year as we start to ascend from COVID. And all the things strike their fears and encourage them. And when we do that, encourage those who dislike us. We are living the second of the greatest commandments. Let's put these commandments into everyday life. Let's take them out of the book. The book wasn't meant to be simply something in a museum. It was meant to be lived. And when we do that, we find the peace of Christ. We're going to see you again a couple of times this week. I know we are. So you have a great week and know that God has something special in store for you. I don't feel real secure right now. <laughs> Let us now stand and renew our profession of faith, for I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of
Let us pray. Our God's word has reminded us that love is the greatest commandment. Let us live that commandment now as we pray. For the church, that all the church does and teaches be permeated by reverence for God and trust in God's love, we pray. For the nations, that the equal dignity of all persons be recognized in our church and the world, we pray. For ourselves, that love of neighbor lead us to treat our earth and environment with care, we pray. That sacrifices made by parents for their children and children for the sake of aging parents bear witness to God's abiding care for all, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the seriously ill and hospitalized be comforted, including Mary Larson, Shirley Whitehead, Joan Viscosi, Catherine Tebby, Winnie Hansberry, Charlie Mason, Michael Nutka, Marie Nero, John West, Sylvia Guthrie, and for the homebound of our parish, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all the faithful departed be mercifully gathered into God's eternal joy, including Philomena Schlove, Rose D'Alisso, uh, Joseph Clue, Ruth Kirk, and those whose names hang on the columns of our church, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, let us present to God all of our prayers and intercessions. <clears throat> And for the people of St. Joseph, whom we remember in a special way in this liturgy, we pray. Lord our God, the only one worthy of our devotion, you are the source of our life and love. Hear the prayers of your sons and daughters, for we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our brother and good of all his holy church. For may these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation, and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. For it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being, and while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of eternal life. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Frank, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, and with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
For behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join us in singing 707, The Call is Clear and Simple. Number 707.
I'd now like to invite all those little chickens who have, are too young to receive communion to please come forward for a blessing. And even those little kids that are old enough to go to First Communion, come on up anyhow, okay? Well, how are you today? You know, I gotta talk to y'all at one time. Is that all right? Okay, what's that, a little skeleton? Oh, you're all set for Halloween, aren't you, huh? There you go, hi. And mom's got her little baby today and all these kids. You guys doing pretty good? Huh? You're happy. Have you had breakfast yet? So you're going to go home and have lunch. Okay. Well, we got a few more coming up here. Come on. I'm coming as fast as I can. <laughs> okay. We're going to ask God for a special blessing. You know what two months from today is? You know what two months from today is? It's a, yeah, it's New Year's Eve. Yes, right. So we're going to ask God to make the next two months of this year fantastic, okay? And we're going to have fun. We're going to have Thanksgiving and Christmas and all kinds of stuff. And your moms and dads are all going to be pulling their hair out, okay? That's right. I pull my hair out, and I don't even have kids. All right, may God bless you today. Father, Son, Holy, yeah. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, may he grant you a wonderful rest rest of 2021 and may you be a blessing to everybody you meet and see amen come here father there you go oh i just love short people <laughs> so let's give them a big hand huh there you go Now, I've just got one thing to say. I'm not a, I can be a little shy at times. I don't always express, <laughs> express myself properly. But let me tell you something. I have had an earworm. You know what an earworm is, don't you? You just can't get that song out of your head. For three years, and it was what they played at communion. I call it, oh, sacred heart surround, head surrounded. I don't know what you guys said. That was good. <laughs> so uh, you all were exceptional you're always good but I mean you all were exceptional today so I want to thank you for everything okay and that man that's a, a cello or a bass bass I shouldn't say this from the pulpit I might steal that someday I love that thing so if you're missing one you can go over to my house okay <laughs> Let us pray. You did not hear that from me, even those people in TV land. For may the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promised through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, this celebration is ended. Let us go forth now to serve God and to serve God. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing number 766, City of God, 766. <laughs> 